Good evening. Good evening. I am very honored to be here and uh, with Administrator Bolden and the rest of the speakers tonight. They've set a very, very, uh, whoa, on wheels here. They've set a very good tone for the conference. And I just want to share a little bit about my, about my background. I have a very similar background to Administrator Bolden. I had two parents that were school teachers. And I, I remember, you know, you know, when you think back to your childhood, you remember a few things that happened to you. And, one of the things was I, I remember getting in trouble in elementary school with Brandon Miller. We were turned over a desk, and I get escorted to the principal's office by my ear by this little woman named Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Carl Wall was the principal, very stern. She would, you know, take care of the business at hand, using her hand usually to have <laughs> lots of hands in my development. <laughs> now. I came from a family of educators, so you know there were a lot of educators in the community. And on the way home, I stopped at my friend Butch Jones's house, whose mother was also an educator. And they have this, you know, that educator telepathy that you know if you've done something wrong, they all know. And so I had another hand in my development <laughs> at his house. And then when I got home, I got the real deal. You know, my dad says, "Get a switch, make sure it's big enough." <laughs> but these hands in my development were with love. We came from a community that knew that they wanted their children to grow up the right way. They wanted us to be successful. They wanted us to be great pillars of the society. They wanted us to do good things. And I think that's what this community is doing here. We are coming together as a team, collaborators across the agency, corporations, nonprofits, people from all over trying to come together to ensure that the students up here have all the tools that they need and required to be the next generation of scientists, engineers, and explorers. Now, one of the pillars here is longitudinal study. When I became an astronaut, I, I think I was in the Corps for about two years, and I went to Goddard Space Flight Center to give a presentation. Now, usually when you give a presentation, they ask you how, how many times have you flown in space, and at that time I hadn't flown yet, so one kid in the audience said, well, don't astronauts fly in space? So then, does that mean that you're not really an astronaut because you haven't flown in space yet? And so I'm sitting there trying to figure out, you know, what to say next. And this group of kids walk in. It's about 10 of them. They're high school students. And they all fall asleep. So I'm thinking, my career as a motivational speaker is really going downhill at the beginning of my career. But I'm showing Dr. Bernard Harris, who's the first African-American man to do a spacewalk, and one young lady wakes up, you know, she sees him, kind of eyes kind of glazed, and she looks and she hears me say, Dr. Bernard Harris, and then she falls back asleep. <laughs> About five years later, I'm at a conference, a NSBE conference in LA, and I'm signing pictures, and this young lady walks up to me and says, hi, do you remember me? And I'm like, no, I don't, but <laughs> you want to tell me a little bit more about yourself? She says, well, five years ago, I was in a talk that you gave, and I remember falling asleep. But I woke up when I saw Dr. Bernard Harris floating in space. And now I'm going to medical school, and now I'm going to be an astronaut after that. So you never know who's listening. You never know who's watching. That's why it's so important that we as educators, as scientists, as department chairs, as people in the community, make sure that we get the right message out. And this one-stop shopping initiative is the right message. You go to one location to see exactly the opportunities you have at NASA. And I think this would be a great opportunity for other organizations to look at this model for ways to include, be inclusive of all students. Now, all of you students here, I was a GSRP student, graduate. Uh, we don't call that GSRP anymore. Mabel always tells me don't call it that, just call it fellowship. But I was one of you guys 24 years ago at the University of Virginia. And I had my engineering degree paid for by NASA. After that, I worked for 12 years at NASA Langley as a research scientist. And then a friend of mine, he had the forethought to think that, hey, Leland will be a great astronaut. So he handed me an application, I looked at it, didn't fill it out, and thought nothing of it. Well, that same year, a colleague of mine, Dr. Charlie Camarda, yeah. got into the astronaut corps, and I said to myself, well, if that knucklehead can get in, <laughs> I can get in. And so 
I was walking, so I then applied, and I was thinking about applying, and I was walking up in the hallways of NASA headquarters, and Charlie Bolden had happened to be up there, and I told him I was thinking about applying, and he said, well, you can't get unless you apply. You need to apply. So I applied, and I got in. And it's all about people having forethought for you. Sometimes you don't know exactly what you want to do with your lives. But I, I challenged the students up here. I mean, I was a chemistry major in college, material science engineer, you know, played a little football, but then became a NASA astronaut. And I had no clue that I would be going that way. So whatever dreams, goals, desires you have, go for it. Don't put blinders on, because you never know what that other opportunity is going to be. And I challenge all of you in here to utilize this one-stop shopping. Tell your friends about it. Tell your friends' friends. And be role models for NASA. You're the ambassadors of NASA. You carry on the legacy of those that have fallen. I've, I've talked to students before about carrying on the legacy of those that have fallen. Some of the people in the core, the Columbia accident, the Challenger accident. And the night of the, the uh, Columbia accident, I was at David Brown's home in Washington, Virginia, trying to console his father. And his father turned to me with tears in his eyes and he said, my son is gone, there is nothing you can do to bring him back. But the biggest challenge would be, the biggest tragedy would be if you don't carry on their legacy by continuing to fly in space. So carry on the legacy of those that have fallen, pull up the people that are not doing well in school, mentor them, talk to them, because we're all in this together, it's one big team. And One Stop Shopping, Mabel, this is a great initiative. And from education, we're in a revamping. We're trying to figure out what are the, what are the things that we do best. And let's, let's accentuate those and do those best. We have a great brand. We have great content. We have great subject matter experts. So let's strategically partner with our fellow agencies and with our corporations and nonprofits to ensure that all of our society and all of our kids have a very good hand in their development. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.